Welcome to a new vlog. Today I'm excited because we're going to take a look at an awesome piece of instrumentation. I've received a pre-production demo unit of the Joule Scope and if you haven't heard of the Joule Scope so far, that's okay, I'm gonna tell you more in this video, but first let's take a look in the box. Now the Joule Scope is a low cost precision DC energy analyzer which is uh, currently on Kickstarter. So check out the links in the description of the video for the Kickstarter campaign because it has a massive discount from the retail price. So we have a note here. Hi Florin, thanks for your great work on Voltlog. I have enclosed a Joule Scope, the most affordable and easy to use precision DC energy analyzer. Joule scope measures current and voltage then computes power and energy. It makes it easy to optimize energy consumption for microcontrollers, Internet of Things products, wearables, embedded systems and your fun hobby projects that run on batteries. At the hardware level the Joule scope is an extremely fast auto ranging shunt ammeter plus voltmeter plus 2 channel 14 bit 2 meg samples per second isolated USB oscilloscope. So this right here already answers a bunch of my questions regarding if the uh, regarding the ADC they use, the sample rate and whether or not it's isolated. So Joule Scope launches on Kickstarter on February 19 and starts at 399 US dollars. I was also wondering on the input voltage range and we can see right here it supports from minus 1 up to plus 15 volts and from uh, uh, minus 1 amp to 3 amps. But as we'll see later it can also measure uh, short peaks of current up to 10 amps. So this is what I got inside the box. The Joule Scope, uh, it's made by Judd Perch. Uh, a couple of stickers. I got this uh, custom front panel which is designed specifically for measuring USB devices. You replace this and you don't need uh, banana jacks anymore. This should be really useful for measuring USB devices. Uh, another uh, small module. This one is called USB power to banana plug adapter. So you, you would come in with a micro USB on this side and uh, this would act like the in power for the Joule scope. Um, a USB cable, um, another USB uh, micro cable and uh, interestingly um, he, Matt, the creator of the Joule scope, also included this module which is uh, just a, a small Arduino board. This will likely contain some demo code uh, which I can use and measure this board with the Joule scope. I was just thinking of that that I will be uh, needing to uh, create my own um, uh, small development board with some, some test code just to create something to measure with the Joule scope. And that's so nice. He also included a screwdriver because obviously we do teardowns here on the Vollog channel. So uh, he, he thought I should have this for easy teardown of the device. Thank you very much. Yeah, so this uh, second note confirms what I said earlier. Uh, this is the Joule Scope Evaluation Kit. So they give you that uh, small uh, USB board to supply power and the small Arduino board to uh, generate basically current consumption on the uh, Joule Scope just to have something to measure. So I'm not sure if this is included with the Kickstarter package or if it's optional. Uh, that remains to be seen on the Kickstarter page. Let me present you the main unit. On this side we have uh, four banana jacks, uh, two for the input and two for the output. You would connect the input to your power supply and uh, the, uh, on the output you would connect your device under test. On the other side we have the uh, USB interface to connect the Joule scope to the computer. So as we saw in the note that Matt included, they say they have an uh, isolated interface. So this doesn't pose any, any problem for your computer, no ground uh, loop issues. But we'll uh, check that later because I'm doing a teardown. The Joule Scope works with a software companion that has multimeter view and an oscilloscope view, which I find very useful because it will allow you to time correlate measurements of voltage and current. That can be extremely useful when determining the energy usage of your device. 
and although it's not present on this uh, demo unit, Matt, the creator of uh, Julescope, told me uh, he plans to add uh, two input GPIOs and two output um, uh, GPIOs uh, to the unit in the final version and those um, uh, input and outputs would be correlated with the oscilloscope view and uh, can be used to trigger uh, certain events. So I'm not able to show that functionality uh, but it should be implemented in the final version of the Julescope. But before we continue with the review, let's take a look inside because I'm curious to see how this thing is built. I expect to see a few different shunt resistors, a way to switch those shunt resistors because to accommodate that wide dynamic range you need different valued resistors. We need some low noise amplifiers and comparators, possibly a dedicated ADC chip for that uh, high resolution, a microcontroller, probably a 32-bit one with built-in USB interface and some isolation circuitry and uh, of course additional supporting circuitry like voltage regulators and filtering. It looks like I have uh, unit 41 and I'm gonna start the disassembly from the front panel uh, of the device. Uh, Matt recommended that in the note and I just love it when uh, makers of, uh, of hardware equipment just give you instructions on how to open their device. You don't see that thing happening anymore from the uh, big brand name manufacturers. Wow, I didn't expect the unit to look this clean inside. Like Matt told me this is a demo unit and I was expecting some uh, hand to find some hand assembly in here but obviously it's not the case this demo unit has been professionally assembled. So the front panel is connected via this 0.1 inch header and I really like that this is a cost effective uh, way to create front panels design them like PCBs and you can make a bunch of uh, different models and they will all fit uh, very nicely as front panels. Also for the USB side they are using uh, PCB FR4 panels as the uh, front panel. There are many components on the Julescope motherboard in very tiny packages so I had to pause the video to identify them but now we can go over the board and talk about it. I'm gonna start by saying that this is likely a four layer board, could be more but at least four layers. Next I'm gonna mention the uh, shunt resistors because uh, they are very important in this instrument. There are six shunt resistors. First one is 0.1 ohm, the next one is 0.2 ohms, 1 ohm, 10 ohm, 100 ohm and 1 kilo ohm. It's necessary to have this many to keep the burden voltage down across the wide range. For example, the unit has a burden voltage of just 25 millivolts at 1 amp. Each shunt resistor has its own MOSFET for bypassing its path. For the smaller value resistors we have these uh, beefier MOSFETs because those will be carrying the higher currents. Interestingly, the switch time between uh, selecting a different shunt resistor is one microsecond and a new connection is always made first before breaking the old connection uh, just to maintain power to the device under test. I'm curious as to how this unit is calibrated uh, during manufacturing because those uh, shunt resistors might uh, be uh, chosen for good stability as a parameter but their absolute value needs to be calibrated and stored sometime before shipping to customer. The joule scope is coated to have a 1 giga ohm input impedance and that is what it allows it to take accurate and precise low current measurements. Because we are talking about nano amps here, we can't be messing around with uh, 10 mega ohm input impedances. Up in this corner we have uh, three MCP6562, these are dual comparators from microchip and according to the data sheet, and according to the data sheet, the output toggle frequency can reach 4 MHz on these. So I'm gonna go ahead and assume they're used to determine when to switch uh, which shunt resistor. Next to these we have some voltage uh, regulator from TI with uh, some nice big ceramic filtering caps. 
we probably have a bunch of voltage regulators spread around the board because all of these uh, high precision op amps and comparators uh, probably have plus and minus symmetrical uh, supply voltage. Now here is our isolation line. On the top we have a small transformer for passing AC voltage from this side to the front side. We then have a diode bridge for uh, rectification and converting that AC voltage back to DC and additional circuitry to regulate the different voltages required on the uh, isolated side. Now a bit lower we have a 6 channel digital isolator and interestingly we see they use 2 pins for a serial interface and 4 pins for what looks like a parallel interface. I believe both the serial interface and the parallel interface connects to the FPGA. Additionally we have a single channel optocoupler, maybe they needed an extra isolated channel to control something to reset the microcontroller or something similar. Overall this digital isolation is handled by two small FPGAs and I wasn't expecting this but uh, these are not cheap and they certainly raise the bomb cost. The front-end FPGA could be doing uh, uh, more than uh, just reading a few lines uh, like um, uh, it could be handling the shunt resistor selection because it would be capable of doing that faster than a microcontroller. Speaking of which we have an STM32 microcontroller in here. There are still a few pieces missing from the front-end image that I'm painting here. I wasn't able to identify any external ADC or voltage reference chip so they could be using the 12-bit ADC inside the STM32 microcontroller. I know technically it's possible to implement an ADC into an FPGA but I'm not sure that's the case here. I'm not even sure it's possible with these smaller FPGAs. Now I would love to hear your feedback in the comments below. The hardware design looks really professional. Matt, the uh, designer, clearly knows what he's doing, uh, but there is one thing I would suggest regarding the PCB layout. I noticed there are tracks going on the sides of the PCB in the area where it slides on the enclosure grooves. They tried to solve the problem by adding captain tape, but it would be better to avoid having this extra step of adding the captain tape and uh, any potential problems uh, that this might be causing uh, could be solved by just modifying the layout to push those, those tracks inwards so that they clear the rails. Matt from uh, Julescope mentioned he plans adding um, some GPIOs which technically could mean reading them with a microcontroller and encoding their data over the uh, uh, serial interface or reading them with the FPGA and uh, once again encoding their da data over uh, one of those interfaces. Moving to the USB side of things, we have a uh, beefy microcontroller, the Cortex-M4 LPC54608, which can operate up to 180 MHz and has built-in full-speed USB 2.0 interface. And I'm sure they uh, take advantage of that to transfer all the data to the PC. And we have the second FPGA which takes uh, in the parallel uh, port as well as the serial interface and acts like a buffer before the Cortex-M4. I'm not imagining why they need this second FPGA. Uh, I mean, couldn't the microcontroller handle the data stream directly uh, via DMA? Are they doing some kind of compression here on the data stream to increase their throughput? I really don't know but maybe you can leave a comment with your idea or suggestion um, in the uh, comment section below the video. Besides these two main components, we have some regulators and some MOSFETs for switching the primary of the transformer to uh, create that AC voltage to transfer power to the secondary. Regarding the analog uh, bandwidth of the joule scope, it's uh, coated at 250 kilohertz for voltage measurements but it can vary for current measurements, especially on the lower ranges. It can go down to 15 kilohertz, uh, which is expected due to limitations in the analog op-amps and their gain. However, it shouldn't be a problem uh, at 15 kilohertz because normally in, the, uh, in these lower ranges, the device under test is in sleep mode, which is a pretty constant mode without rapid variations of energy consumption and still you, you have 15 kilohertz which should be enough. So I've got the unit back together, I've uh, downloaded and installed the software. Now let's do some measurements. 
Upon opening the software, it will automatically connect with the Joule scope if you have it connected and drivers are installed on your computer. On my Windows 7 64-bit machine, it was installed automatically and the software starts in this multimeter view where you have voltage, current, power and energy meters. But let's check out the oscilloscope view because this is the most interesting part. And we are greeted with two graphs, current on the top one and voltage on the bottom one. The yellow trace is the actual value while the red traces represent mean max channels. I would appreciate the ability to disable this min max trace from the display because this is not always needed. I can also close the voltage display because in this case nothing much is happening on the voltage measurement with uh, this device under test and we get more display area for the current trace this way. We can clearly see how our board is behaving. By the way, for this measurement, I'm using the small Arduino demo board that um, they sent me. So our demo board actually performs four sequences as recorded here. First, it will blink the LED 10 times with constant pulse width. And we can clearly see that on the graph. It's the most obvious pattern with the square wave. Next, it will blink the LED for 10 times with decreasing pulse width but constant spacing. This is our second pattern with these sharp peaks which decrease in amplitude because the pulses are very short. Next, it will blink the LED for 10 times decreasing both pulse width and pulse spacing. We can also notice this sequence if we zoom in here. And finally, it will blink the LED with minimum width which appears as a simple peak on the graph so the sensitivity is very high on this instrument even with these very short periods it did record uh, a change in the current used by the microcontroller or the demo board in this case now using the scroll wheel on the mouse we'll zoom horizontally at the mouse pointer origin i like that behavior it's what you would expect as a user now, one of the features I would love to see here is the ability to correlate this graph with um, an external event created by the device under test. Like, have the uh, device under test send a, a GPIO signal when it enters a certain sequence and then have the Joule scope start recording at that moment or present that signal overlaid on our graph. Another software feature that I think would be really helpful is markers and measurements just like you have on an oscilloscope you would place markers on the trace and do measurements luckily the creators of the joule scope already have a to-do list and these features are included on that list but one feature i didn't see on that list is the ability to save a screenshot of the screen i would love to have a button that when clicked it would grab a, a picture of the window and prompt you for saving location or even better have the ability to predefine a save location. That should be really useful if you want to save and share the uh, graphical measurement results. I've noticed there is a delay between the uh, trace and the real world. Here is an example. Between I plug in the module and the data shows up on display, there's about three seconds of delay. So they might be doing some compression or buffering of the data before showing it on screen. And another tool that I would consider useful, but maybe I'm dreaming here, I would like some form of battery life calculator integrated in the software. Ideally, you would have the user input battery capacity and then by simply recording device consumption for a certain period, the software would integrate that and calculate expected battery life. Of course, this would have some weak points depending on the battery chemistry, cutoff voltage and how the device under test handles that the estimated battery life could vary in real life but still it could help the developer a lot i think i've uh, covered most of the features of the joule scope and honestly it's an awesome instrument it has great specs and only comes at a fraction of the cost of what you would pay for a big name instrument brand uh, that does the same thing so it, it feels like an instrument designed to solve a problem and help other engineers I'm happy to have received uh, a Joule scope for review because it will enable me to do these kind of measurements for future projects. 
Don't forget to check out the Kickstarter link in the description and support the channel by liking the video, subscribing, leaving a comment or sending a donation. Thank you for watching, I'll see you next week.